Good evening and welcome back to The Conversation. I'm your host, Robin Vernon. Tonight, we will depart from our usual conversation format where I have someone join me in studio. That's because I am honored tonight to have as my guest the first Belizean American to be nominated for a prestigious Tony Award. Kara Young has been nominated for the best performance by an actress in a feature role in a play for her role in Clyde's, a story about a truck stop sandwich shop which offers its formerly incarcerated kitchen staff a shot at redemption. If you are not familiar, the Tony Award recognizes excellence in Broadway theater. Kara Young was born and raised in Harlem, New York. Her parents are well-known Belizeans, Vanessa and Clay Young. They are Belizean born and bred who later migrated to the US, but they have maintained strong links with Belize and visit so often that you may think they live here. Kara made her debut as an actor on the stage in theaters in New York and has performed in many plays, and she is also a film and television actor. Welcome to the conversation, Kara. Hello. How are you? Thank you for that lovely, warm introduction. You, that is not a problem. And <laughs> thank you for having us. Kara, first of all, let me first tell you congratulations on your nomination. Tell us, how does it feel to receive this Tony nomination for Best Actress in a Broadway Play? Were you surprised? Um, I was very surprised. This was very unexpected. It feels, it, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, overwhelming feeling to be acknowledged in this way and in this light. Um, yeah, I am, I... I'm still, I'm still kind of going through the most emotions and it's evolving. Like the reality of what it is, is evolving. Today was a very special day. Um, <laughs> me realizing what was happening, but uh, this has all been very, very surprising. I'd imagine though the feeling of it all, it, it must be so overwhelming, but, but like in a positive way, because mm -hmm. I imagine with something like this, it, it's like as much as it surprises you, this is something that you yourself as an actress strive for. Would I be right in saying that? Like you, you give your all on the stage in, in your roles, you commit to your characters and everything because you want to be able to give this performance. And when you're actually recognized for it, it's, it's that humility in you that makes you go, like, no yeah. way, you know? Like, it, it, I, I imagine that's how it is. You know, what's, what's, what's so interesting to me is that like, I, I have to admit this is so, this is such an honor to be acknowledged in this way. Um, you know, I, I didn't necessarily set out to receive an acknowledgement like this, but this is, um, someone had said, and, and, it, and it hit me in a moment, that this is the highest accolade in theater. And that feels like, wow, that's like an, a, an accomplishment. It's, it's almost like bringing everything together, that everything that I've, I guess I've worked for up until this point, and that I, there's still so much more work to do. Um, but it was really just about sticking to the work, to doing the work, to doing the work as best as I could. and really getting to the depths of humanity within this character, Letitia, who was a formerly incarcerated mother who is, who is caring for her sick child. And, and, and in a lot of ways, I feel like this is not just an acknowledgement of, of me necessarily, but more so of Letitia and her resilience and her perseverance to get up every day and, and survive, you know? and make the best out of what life has been giving to her, you know? Yeah. I love yeah. I love the I love the immersiveness, the immersion that that one takes on when trying to really pour themselves into certain roles. You know, it's like you you eat, sleep and breathe the the character so that on screen or on the stage you can give the best performance possible. And it's something like the commitment and the, the, the dedication 
to the role. It's something that I myself have always admired because um, let you in on a little secret. I'm kind of a fan of the acting realm and it's something that I always thought that I would enjoy doing or, or it's something that I'd really just want to give a try myself. So like all the different um, formulas and all the different tactics that one assumes to try to really commit to these roles. It's something that I really admire and in some ways try to study so that I can emulate it myself when doing small scale stuff like commercials or advertisements. So you along with so many others are actually big inspirations for me with that because I can learn a lot I feel. And it hits closer to home as well because I have a Belizean that I can take tips from and all that. So that's awesome. I see that there has been a, well, quite frankly, like a flurry of activities surrounding this nomination. And I know today was a very special day where you actually today received was your special plaque. special day. I yeah. can imagine. And, and what was the experience like? Well, so, I mean, I have to kind of go back, you know, I, I received this nomination on the 9th of May. And um, again, very, very unexpected. Um, and today was our, was the luncheon and the luncheon is held at, uh, the, the world famous and New York famous rainbow room, the place that my father works. Okay. And, um, today I walk in and my father, my father is working obviously, but when the, 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 the magical moment was not just being there with him, you know, because it's kind of like, there's no plus ones <laughs> available. <laughs> like there's no plus ones on this list. It's just the nom nominees. Okay. Um, but they call out each uh, nominee in per category. And when they called out my name, um, one of the chairman from the American theater when wing Emilio uh, called out my name. And then he also said, Hey, uh, so this young woman, when I walked in today, uh, a, a gentleman was beaming with pride and said that his daughter was nominated for a Tony That's and his beautiful. name was Clay Young. And my father on cue, I mean, he didn't even know. <laughs> but he came out and everyone stood to their feet and gave him a standing ovation. That's um, and the entire room was so emotional because it was like a and when not like it it was a, a new york moment it was a magical moment it was a 360 moment you know i have i grew up coming to the rainbow room and to be an attendee for such a prestigious event um and my father being so present there was very um it was a it was a moment for me i can imagine it was. He's laughing at me. <laughs> but it really was a moment for me. And I think it was like the realization, like, oh, wow, I, I'm nominated. No, but that's um, pride. Not to digress, but. That's pride in yeah. both directions, though. You as yeah. a daughter being able to have that award and, and that moment just happen with your father there. Because as you said, it, it wasn't something that's usual. It's not something normal. It, it just happened to be that he was able to be there for and with you. And then it, it goes without saying the pride <laughs> that your dad feels like that, that goes without saying. So I can imagine just how beautiful of a moment it was. And truly, I'm, I'm so happy to see that you, you could have experienced something like that. And it's like you told me earlier, the work's not done. You got, you have so much more that you want to offer to the world and the big screen and the stage. And I can just imagine where you can go from here. So Aww. truly, truly, I could not be, we could, we could not be happier for you all. And now to give mm -hmm. the viewers a bit of a, like a background, a bit of an overview of what Clyde's is, can you explain yes. a little bit of the storyline and your role in the play? Yeah, of course. Uh, so Clyde's is a sandwich shop um, and, uh, our boss Clyde is played by the incomparable Uzo Aduba, um, and who's also nominated for, um, a Tony as well. And, uh, basically it, it, it's for the formerly incarcerated. So people who are formerly incarcerated get employed 
uh, at Clyde Sandwich Shop. And they, what seems to be a very like regular job, it ends up being a space for these people to truly create and and enjoy and and well the hope is to enjoy the creation of making sandwiches making these sandwiches and so the entire play is me sort of working on my perfect sandwich um but we are led by this very shaman like creative uh magical human uh ron cephas jones who's also nominated for a tony um and my other lovely incredible uh uh, people of uh, Reza Salazar and Edmund Donovan who are also in the play. The play Clyde is by Lynn Nottage and directed by Kate Wariski. And I think it's, it's a comedy first of all, but it's really about honoring the, honoring the formerly incarcerated and, and creating a world in which these people can own their creative spirits and not be locked into the to the constructs of what the world has been giving them up until this moment. Um, I feel like from for me and for for Letitia, she is really honing in on her creativeness, honing in and owning her voice as a creative by making her perfect sandwich. There's a line in the play that Montrellis, who's played by Ron Cephas Jones, says to me and says, you know, surprise yourself with an ingredient that doesn't work. And I think that the sandwich making part in us is a metaphor for surprising yourself in life. You know, like the worlds that we are in sometimes can be very harsh. Um, and harsh, but there's a world inside of us as well that we just don't, how can we hone in on that? You I know, agree. and when the, when the entire world is failing you, this person, like these people are really trying not to fail. And yet the, that, yet the, the world that they're in is failing them. Um, and that's just due to capitalism. And we can get into, I mean, that's a whole other conversation. It's an entirely. You know, that's a whole different thing. conversation. Yeah. But like, I feel like this play touches upon spirit, upon the creative spirit, upon the resilient spirit, um, and, and really honoring the formerly incarcerated. I mean, for me, for me, the work is about shifting consciousness and humanity. For me, it's about letting people see uh, 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 another side to this this beautiful black woman who's taking care of her sick child who is uh you know re-entering society after being locked up and really trying to right her wrongs you know but at the same time she's just trying to live I understand. I was actually going to ask, um, as I was hearing you speak about the plot, I know that like on the surface it would, it would be exactly as you said, you have these formerly incarcerated uh, working on making sandwiches, but as you were explaining it, I was, I was going to ask if, like, I did pick up on a sort of symbolism behind it with mm. the sandwich. It, it's not just a sandwich, like it's you. It's you, and as you're trying to make this perfect sandwich, your sandwich, you're actually working on making a better, more perfect you. And that's beautiful because I feel in storytelling, um, whether it be in Broadway or on the big screen or anything of the like, um, the stories are so beautiful and it just requires you to, to look at them from like an open mind and, and really dig deep into, into what they represent. And really a good story is only told well through great actors and actresses like yourself. And I'm hearing you speak about Letitia and everything. And I know I asked you earlier on when I told you that I have a profound admiration for actors and actresses who can pour themselves into their roles and really immerse themselves into their roles. And I'm listening to you talk. So now I really have to ask, did you find a real connection with the storyline and your role as Letitia? I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, this was so, in my in my theater 
my theater uh, career thus far, I, I've played a lot of children. I've played young children, teenagers, people who are coming into themselves. And Letitia was my first role as as an adult, uh, you know, like, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, I really, really, really more than connected to her. I, you know, there were so many things that were not like myself, you know, um, I, I come from a very different kind of world, you know, the, the life that has been provided for me has been one of, of of abundance and i say that with you know it, it like in re, in in reference to you know or in, in relation to rather um but i what, what i do know is that as a black vessel and as a vessel in this art form the cards could have been different for me and I, and I think about all of the girls that I went to high school with, you know, all of uh, the, the girls who are, who are my, my, my spiritual peers, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the streets of New York. And this is, Letitia represents them too. You know, there are a lot of people who are, who are just waking up every day to survive. And what does that look like? You know, because I know those women very well, um, and it's 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 an homage to to the black woman as well. I mean, Letitia, in a lot of ways, represents the resilience of the black woman, especially in in an America like this. Okay, so you would say that the role was was bigger than yourself. It was, Absolutely. it was, it was you, it was your family, it was your friends, it was, it was everyone that you know that, that has been affected in some way, shape or form by the circumstances of the system, right? Yeah, yeah, due to, due to cat, like the only thing that questions our, our well-being is capitalism, you know, so... Yes, yes, absolutely. I think that you're right. You're right. You're right on when you say like it. it it's way bigger than me. It's it, it is way bigger than me. Again, Clyde's was a comedy, it, you know. Um, but when you do make people laugh, you, there's something changes within them, you know. And so, what are you? What are we? What are we paying attention to? That means that we're actually paying attention, you know. Yeah. I get you completely. Now, so you told me, right, yeah. that this is the one of, it's the largest awards in theater, right? Well, I said that somebody had said that it was the highest accolade. <laughs> All right, so someone said theater. that it's the highest award in theater, right? So if I'm connecting the dots, right, I understand that this is your first Broadway show. So how does it feel to be nominated after acting in your first Broadway show for quite possibly the highest award in Broadway. When you say it like that, it feels amazing. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it like that, you know, it, it's, you know, I, I, um, I am grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm always grateful for the opportunity to, to, to act. Um, and to be in a Lynn Nottage play directed by Kate Wariski. I mean, Lynn Nottage is a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning playwright um, and has changed the lives of many with her marvelous pen that is absolutely dedicated to humanity. Um, and to be a part of that, like I... Like this is this is the 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 cherry on top of the cake, but like the the cake is was made of of us in rehearsal and putting the show up on its feet and performing eight shows a week and you know the the magic of the theater. Is, all the effort, is, all the yeah. passion, all the love. 
that went into it, right? Yeah, I mean, I am very, very grateful for this moment. I, I wouldn't, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very, it's, it's evolving. Like the, the language around it is evolving because every single day it's something new. Like today was very profound for me and, and, and a super realization of what, what, what has happened. It was big. It was big. It was big. Least. I think because dad was there, it was really big. It was really <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, Kara, mm -hmm. while the Tony nomination is huge, which we, we have settled that debate, right? <laughs> I know you've received previous awards and recognition for other acting roles as well. Can you tell us a bit about some of those? Yes, yes. Um, Lime Arts Production presented me with the Young Icon Award, uh, which is so touching because it's a group of other young artists who are lifting the artists of today and of now, which was just very, very lovely. And um, like I also I received a Lily. Was that? I said much like what I said earlier that you're doing for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I also received a Lily Award that is for uh, women of women and women of color in the theater. And I received a Theater World Award, which was acknowledging my Broadway debut. Um, That's cool. And that was really special. Th this has all been very, again, unexpected and just a lot, a lot. Well, over, well, good, good, a lot, good, a good lot. A lot. I, I wouldn't good take, I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't take this back ever. This is, this is very, very special, you know. And a lot of people, what a lot of people are saying, a lot of my peers, they're saying that, you know, that I'm very deserving of this. And I, and you know, it's sometimes it's hard for me to understand that or hear that. Um, but I know that. Uh, one of my mentors who passed last year said in a, in a video when we were putting together his memorial, he said, do the work and the work will take care of you. And I feel like this is a part of the work taking care of me in this way. So this is very special. I can imagine that that's a really beautiful way to put it. All right. So. <laughs> Do you have any preference to acting in plays versus acting in films? Um, that's a really good question. I feel like I'm going to say there is no preference. I will say that theater is my foundation. I come from the theater um, and uh, live performance is, is something that, that I I'm, I'm, I guess I'm used to, you know, um, the acting for film and television is still a challenging, I think they're both very challenging mediums, regardless of what they are. And that it doesn't, I mean, from, for me, it does, it's not something that's easy, you know, it, it's definitely a lot of work. Um, and I feel like I'm still getting acquainted with, uh, with film and television, uh, but there's just, Honestly, this is the kind of art that I feel like is a never ending process of learning. And I will continue to learn till the day that I die in this media, in, in this art form, whether it be on stage or for film or television. So I don't necessarily have a preference. I feel like there's just so much magic within them both that, um, I, I, again, I just can't wait to tell more stories that that are, you know, that are meaningful, not just to me, but to the ether of, of humanity. And you yourself would love to take on any that you see yourself being able to really dive in, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like there's always a moment to dive in. There's always a moment to show to show what it is to be human, you know, what it, I mean, we're so complex. We're so, there's just so much information inside of us that 
there's just so much to dive into. There's always a moment of diving into a deep water um, if you're if you're a character, you know, and you know just the way that we're made up, you know, like we're not just made up from our best friend when we were five, but you know the teacher, our favorite teacher when we were younger, or you know the substitute teacher that made a deep impression on us, or the art teacher who that that you know showed us you know who paid attention to us in a certain way that made us feel a little more freer you know so like and then like all of these little moments are something that makes us up and even we don't even know all of those moments for ourselves That's so really true. i feel like there's always there's always a onion to peel there's always doors to open um and there's always a moment to dive so long as there's stories to tell right and there's always stories to tell because everyone's made up of different experiences i love that absolutely absolutely well, there are so many more stories to tell so many well viewers hold that thought as we take a short break and we'll be right back with this amazing discussion Welcome back to the conversation. Tonight, I am thrilled to be talking with Kara Young, Tony Award nominee for Best Actress in a Broadway Play. So, Kara, what would you say were the biggest obstacles or challenges you faced in your acting career so far? Well, I definitely think that I probably have, you know, there's gonna be some obstacles along the way. You know, this is not a, necessarily a very uh, easy road of, you know, uh, as an artist. Um, it takes a lot of, you almost have to have an undi undeniable belief in yourself in order to continue. And because there were, there were many moments in which, um, you know, you kind of feel like it's time to give up or, you know, but in the back of my head, I was like, nah, you can't do that. <laughs> but um, there are many, many obstacles. I mean, finding character is, is, is an obstacle at times. And sometimes like letting, 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 letting the work do what it, do what it does and letting go sometimes is, is, is the answer. Um, but I feel like this is going to be a, 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 an evolving answer for me, you know, and I, I, I know that it's not going to be a, a super easy road uh, even going forward. But there, there, this, this moment now is, is something to cherish for sure. Um, but I feel like the obstacles, if I can be very frank with you and honest. Mm -hmm. I feel like with anything that is anything that is um, worth waiting for or worth going forward with, you're going to face some kind of obstacle. You're going to face some sort of challenge. And those are when these moments mean the most. Things of, you know, a moment like this, this, this Tony nomination, because it, it, it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy at all. But in the sacrifice of all of the other things, you have this moment. So I almost feel like you have to experience a lot of darkness to experience the light, you know, for that super layman terms of like, just kind of sticking it out because there's always light at the end of the tunnel for sure. Pressure makes diamonds, right? Pressure makes diamonds, but you gotta dig. <laughs> yeah. You know, you I'd imagine dig. I'd imagine that like um, one of the things that many uh, actors and actresses would face in this field is the difficulty in trying to separate uh, the personal circumstances or the personal scenarios or issues at the door before they step into their roles. 
because mm. I can I can just imagine like it's it's not as easy as one might think to just dive into a role like you said trying to find a character because that that's quite literally what you do am I correct like you you look for that character in yourself you have to sit yourself down and you you think about this person you you try to create an entire in for yourself in the back of your head you try to create an entire background for this person so that you have a sort of guideline to follow every day when you come in and you have to wear this person right right i mean it's so interesting because like i can't i can't necessarily walk you through like what my process necessarily looks like you know I like the fact that, you know, like it's kind of like building inventory, mm -hmm. spiritual inventory, yeah. you know, a, a spiritual inventory for a very real person. You know, like the whole thing to me is really honoring the playwright, honoring the writer, honoring the vision of that writer, honoring the, the, the curation of the director. Um, and then all of the elements kind of come together with all of the work that we've done for a month of rehearsal to put it on its feet for eight shows a week, you know, or in yeah. film, film and television, it's sort of, there's a lot of work that you sort of do on your own, but at the same time, there's also, um, you know, paying attention to the vision of the director, the vision of the person who, this creation is theirs. Uh, but I, I think Letitia is a very real spirit, you know, the very exists beyond me, you know, and, and, and is out there in the world, you know? So I, 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 as, as much as, as much as, of, as much as my, of myself is in her, there's also, honoring what is around me you know and it's bigger again it's bigger than myself so you're doing it's it for you for and you're doing it for the bigger picture as well you're you're Absolutely. you're really keeping it down for the masses mm-hmm mm -hmm. absolutely i mean letitia represents hope for me you know uh a Hope spirit, for a lot spiritual of people, hope. I'd imagine. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and not just hope, but like hope within self. Like all of us, all of us need. Now I want to ask about the support that you received from your family and from your friends. And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit of a two-parter because along with that, how important was that support for you in, in this amazing journey thus far? very important very important um you know in the very beginning i think they were both a little weary of me following this artistic path even though i had been doing it since i was a kid you know to kind of take off in this journey to say i'm going to be an actor it's got to be hard for any parent to hear um but I didn't want to go to radiology school and <laughs> I didn't want to do anything else. And I just couldn't see myself doing that. Um, but I could see myself getting up every day to, to do this and to, with, with purpose. Um, and, then it, and, and then it slowly became about telling the right stories. Um, we're not even telling the right stories, but just telling meaningful stories that that shifts something inside of me. Um, therefore, I, I, I could only imagine the impact it might have on others. Uh, and it just became a real, like, I just don't, I, I'm, I, what I feel super grateful for is working with the playwrights that I've worked with, working the, with the directors that I've worked with and telling the stories of those visionaries that offer something so undeniable to black humanity, you know, it and questions. It's a strong message. Yeah, it's an incredibly strong message. Every single, every single play that I've worked on in the last seven years has been so, um, 
impact. The, I get revelation of revelations about those characters and, and, and those stories like every day, you know, I'm still thinking about a character uh, that I, that right before the pandemic, whose name is Kiana, who is, who is f fighting her inner demons because she watched television her whole life and is coping with the 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 mass media propaganda going of, on around them yeah, yeah within herself within herself you know when her world is struck by poverty yeah you know so there i i have a lot of revelations about my characters and or about characters about the characters that were that were birthed from those writers pens and minds and spirits and hearts on the subject, when you speak about these characters and, and just the, the different levels of actualization of these characters, now when it comes to you and, and the depth that you have had to dig within yourself to be able to bring these characters to the stage, mm. to the TV, how has your Belizean and, and Caribbean on a whole heritage shaped the creative woman that you are today? Wow, that is such a beautiful question. That is a really beautiful, beautiful question. Um, you know, I feel like it's just another reason to say, you know, I can be every woman, you know? Um, now, I think, about, I think about the stories that I had the 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 honor of knowing from my grandmothers and my grandfather and the stories that have been passed down uh through my lineage um that make that make storytelling richer you know um yeah. and also being of the diaspora and being here in america and growing up in Harlem, I feel like I have had a whole other experience. You know, I, I, I had the, the privilege of spending my summers in Belize with my grandparents, uh, Joan Jenkins and David Jenkins, and being immersed in, in nature versus this, this concrete jungle is just a very, they're very different, different navigations. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, I feel like when I when I think about it as a whole, and this is just obviously my initial response to your question, I feel like I can probably, this answer will evolve for my entire life. As time goes by, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's just, it's, um, it's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful, it's beautiful to have Belize as a foundation, you know, and, to have, and to also have Harlem as a foundation. It's beautiful to understand or, or try to understand both worlds as best as I can. But as I'm a black woman in this America, I'm a black woman in, in Belize, I feel like the stories are endless as a Caribbean woman, as a black woman in America, the stories are endless. That's beautiful. And I can tell you now that here in Belize, we are very proud of you and you are definitely an inspiration to young creatives here and abroad. It's, it's, it's truly all over. And do you have any words of advice or motivation that you would like to share with the creatives out there, the aspiring people, myself included, please? <laughs> advice? I mean, I'm, I'm one to not truly give advice because everybody's going to do what they do. But I mean, if you if you love the thing, then then don't live life in regret. If you love it so much, then love it with all of yourself. And and it, 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 it feels corny to tell to say, follow your dreams, but you know, one an interviewer in the Tony's press junket asked me a question like, 
So what is little, like the little girl who did mine, what does she say? What, when, she, when, she look, when she's looking at this moment, what does she say? You know, and, and I really broke down because I was like, wow, like, what would she say to, look at you, girl, look at you following your dreams, you know? But love it with all of yourself if you're going to love it. I feel it's really important to look back and, and give yourself like a few minutes just to think about younger you and just everything that you've been through at that time and, and all the experiences and all the, the things that happened throughout those years leading up to where you are now. Because it's, it's undeniable that every experience, every stimulus did have a hand in one way or the other to where you are today. And every it's, it's truly thing. important to look back and, and just be grateful for everything. Just, just own it, love it, be grateful for it, and just be happy. And I'd imagine your mom, your dad, you, you're a household of smiles and, and positive anxiety and everything <laughs> going on right now. Because, I mean, let, let's, let's talk about it for a second. The big awards ceremony will be live on CBS on Sunday, June 12th. And you can believe we will all be watching and rooting for you 100%. Do you feel when you think about the Tony Award ceremony, are you nervous? Like, are you, I'm, I'd imagine you're still processing just today, but, but how do you feel counting down to the time? Oh, you know, listen, this, to even be nominated is an acknowledgement and to even be acknowledged is, is such a, it, it, it it's, it's beautiful. I, I nervous. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm nervous because this feels like an award within itself. You know, um, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the night. I'm looking forward to enjoying the night with my family. And uh, yeah, yeah. Kara, to say we're proud of you is an understatement. Here at Colorblind, we've been monitoring your career and we're confident that you will have a long, outstanding and successful acting career both on Broadway and in film. And we will 100% be watching and supporting you every step of the way. We're, we're gonna be like your mom and dad, just really far <laughs> away. We will, we, we're gonna be right there, just, just rooting for you. To us, like you said, you're already a winner, but we will be supporting you and we will be rooting for you to actually bring home the award for best actress for your role in Clyde's. Good luck and thank you so much for joining our conversation tonight. Thank Viewers, you so much. Thank you was, so much for having me. It was a really wonderful, wonderful pleasure speaking with you. It was an absolute pleasure on, on behalf of the team and myself. Thank you so much. Viewers, we will take a final break and we will be right back. Welcome back to the conversation. Viewers, to say tonight was important would actually be an understatement. This was, this was so important for creatives and aspiring actors and actresses or artists on a whole within Belize. And it was an absolute privilege to be able to host Miss Young on tonight's episode of The Conversation. With that being said, we hope that for all you aspiring artists out there, that you take this as a moment of inspiration to see that all the experiences and no matter the circumstances, it is possible to be able to chase your dreams. Like she said, if you believe in it, pursue it and tackle it. Don't let anything stop you from what you believe you're capable of doing. We wish Miss Young the best of luck on the Tony Awards and you can catch it on Sunday, June 12th on CBS. And just keep your fingers crossed and root for it. I mean, a Belizean, the Tony Awards, think about it for a second. 
With that, viewers, our time is up for tonight, but you can remember to join us on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for new episodes of The Conversation right here on CBTV and on Colorblind's Facebook page. Good night and take care.